Hey, this is Sasha, and thanks for joining me here for another SEO training video. Now, in today's training video, I want to discuss using keywords throughout your body or the body text within your website. So, if you have a web page and you're using uh, keywords already within your title tags or using keywords within your metadata, that's all great, fine, and dandy. But the primary uh, the 90% meat of your content in your website is your body text. And if you don't have your primary keywords or some of the main keywords in there in a nice fluid manner, then chances are your website isn't going to be ranked very well for those specific keywords that you're targeting or hoping to get targeted for or listed in the higher ups in the search engines. So, when you're looking at writing your content and writing your page, more than likely you'll naturally just use those uh, keywords or key phrases anyways throughout your uh, videos, throughout your content, throughout your body text. But if you're not, you should always be focusing in on throwing one or two additional keywords and phrases even if it's just in the headlines within that body text. Now, the reason for that is because remember, search engines, they're scanning your web page. They're scanning your website for the text. They're scanning your website for what's inside of that. And if you simply you know, are looking for an email marketing article or an email marketing newsletter or talking about opt-in rates, but you don't mention email marketing at all, you just talk about, well, to increase the open rate, this is what you do. To increase you know, getting those emails or getting those mails opened up and you just don't use email marketing, you probably won't get ranked for email or email marketing. So let me share with you an example at how I look at these uh, and break apart one or two of the posts that I've done. So here's an example post right here and this is how to create a powerful email lead magnet to build your list. Okay, so our key focus, let's just say, is email. So what you can do is naturally, as I create the videos, these get transcribed. And since the things that I'm talking about anyway, I typically will mention those keywords as I'm speaking. So they would normally be in here anyways. But if you're writing articles and posts, you wanna be sure that you use your keywords and phrases throughout the body of the text. Because if you don't, then it's not as relevant or important to the search engines thinking that maybe this article is not as important for that keyword. Now the percentage or the relevancy or the amount of keywords that you use throughout the body is something that's constantly changing. They're constantly adjusting their algorithm so I don't recommend you try to game or play the system. For example, if I'm looking at this um, article or post right here from my website, you know, if I just simply wrote the words email marketing, email marketing, email marketing 5,000 times, it probably wouldn't do me a service because it's just spamming the search engines. They know that and they would probably punish my website. However, if I use it in a fluid manner, talking about email marketing, newsletter lists, building a business, then they would probably rank me for those keywords and terms. So you don't have to get too obs obsessive about these things, but you do wanna make sure you use them uh, periodically. So one of the easy ways to do this or check how you're using the keywords is if I just do a control F or find, you can see it highlights my keywords or phrases that I use. And in this case, I just typed in um, email here at the top. Now I'm using Opera right now just for demo purposes, but you could do this in Google Chrome, Firefox, and so on. And as you scan through, you can see the density that I'm using for when I type in the word email. And you can see I've even used it in these headings right here or headlines. These are the titles, which is also important. So as you continue to look at these things, you'll see the yellow highlighted areas where I'm using the word email. Okay, so you can see here there's email, email, email email, email, and email. So the other thing is, is let's just say you're looking for email list. Now you start to get into something a little bit more specific, which probably there's a little bit less and less. As you get more specific, there'll be less density of those keywords. So you can see, even though there it's a two word phrase, I've still used email list in just a handful of times throughout this post or body. And you can see they are there, but you know they're not everywhere okay so they are there a handful of times so now let's look at email addresses okay or address okay so here again as i start looking through this email address email address there's email address 
Okay, so you can see I've used that word as well a handful of times. So all these things, you know, you constantly keep looking for the density and just make sure it has some in there. The amount of density is going to always change, so don't be too obsessed about it. Don't try and just stuff more keywords in there. But as you do some searching, and if we go to Google, let's just say building an email list, what you'll find is, you know, you'll find, okay, so here's, Here's an article right here, List Building 101, How to Build an Email List. You can see if you're looking to build an email list, I recommend a Weber. Here's one from Social Triggers. So building an email list. So you can see right there, the keyword is being used a handful of times. So it's used twice right here throughout this post. It's not a long post, but it is used right there. The site is ranked very well for that keyword or term. The other one is here's, uh, let's see, vertical response, okay? Uh, build an email. See, they don't even have the full, if I type it in, they don't have the full word together. You know, build an email list. The phrase is not fully together. But if I search for build, there's build, there's your email list, build your email list, build your email list. So build your email list is the main one that they're targeting. So you can see they used it a few times at the top, but not much there. Maybe once down here, the uh, near the freebies. Okay, how about just email list? So now I can see just email list. And you can see they did use that as well a handful of times. So it's really all just about putting in the keywords, but making things flow. Because in the end, remember, it's not just about writing or targeting things for the robots. It's ultimately about writing for humans, but also with robots, search engines, and crawlers in mind, because this is how they get your website ranked. As things continue to evolve and get better with the algorithms, with the computers and the robots, and them scanning your website and understanding what it's all about, you'll probably have to worry about this less and less. But for the meantime, and for the time being, if you're looking to get your website ranked in the search engines, it's good to at least put a handful of keywords or terms naturally, and that's the key point here, is to put it in there naturally as you're writing your blog post or creating video content to naturally place or use those keywords, key terms, or key phrases as you go through and publish and create content. Now, there are definitely certain software systems that can pinpoint little things of accuracy of how many keywords and phrases you should use of this word and how many times you should use that word. And they'll give you statistics and percentages and breakdowns. And you could, by all means, pay you know $100 a month for that software or $500 to own it outright and then get into detail about studying every single page that you actually have and get those rankings higher. But is it worth your time to do that? Normally, you know, you could play with it a little bit. For me, I just look at the natural approach, create content that adds value to the end user. Because for me, the customer is not the search engines. The customer in the end is a person. So I always look at the person. I focus on the person. That's my goal and that's my key. But if you like getting into the nitty gritty, maybe you have a person who really focuses on search engines on your team, then you could go ahead and evaluate these things, tweak some of the body content and text. But the question is, is how much time are you willing to spend on that? Is it worth it to spend 50 hours to try and get one page of your website ranked just a little bit higher? Or maybe just spend 10 or 15 minutes kind of tweaking it and then move on to the next piece of content and add more value to more people. So think about it that way as you continue to build and evolve your search engine marketing practices. Look at the bigger picture and look at the longer term in mind. Thanks for joining me in this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did and you want to get some exclusive content that I have or join me in a live webinar class, then uh, click this link right here. When you click it, enter your name and email address and you'll be put on my newsletter list where I share things privately with the group. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.